Uh, let's get into a, a topic here you know a lot about, and that's guards. Um, 99% of the people that reach out to me and you are guards, right? And everyone, you know, 98% of those want the D1 spot. And there's only so many. And the, fi- the line is so fine between uh, high to mid-major, mid to low, low to D2, et cetera. It's such a fine line unless you have freakish ability uh, athletically or um, – you know, good size for a guard. So give a prescription here. If you've got a high school kid, that's a guard, you know, what are you going to tell them to do if they want to play in college and then get to that, start bumping up levels? Like what does each level does a guard have to possess and what can they do, Alex, to get to that level? What's your prescription? Um, well, it's, it's, it's going to be challenging would be the first thing I would say. Um, when I was visiting Stanford as an assistant coach at Middlebury, they were having, uh, their elite camp. Uh, I think this is back in 2012. I think it was Mike Schrage, who was an assistant there. He's now the head coach at Elon. He gave a little mini lecture to the guards because there was, you know, position breakdown at this elite camp. And the first thing he talked about was supply and demand, right? So Mm -hmm. I think for youngsters to wrap their minds around how difficult it is, I think starting with the fact that there's just so many more guards out there in the market than front court players. So kind of understanding how incredibly unique you have to be to be a scholarship level guard is a good start, right? It's a good start. Um, And then I think that, you know, you could jump into the analytics of, of the, the matter. Like, you know, you want to have that two to one, three to one assist to turnover ratio. You want to be probably 90% from the line, which is extremely challenging to, to accomplish. Um, and then somewhere, you know, above 50% from the field and 40% from three, um, that should be kind of, what you're striving to, to accomplish. Um, and it's, it's rare, extremely rare at this level. Um, but if you were in that ballpark, that would probably mean that you're skilled enough. Right. And then I think the athleticism and the size, you know, you have to be remarkably quick as a smaller player on the floor. Um, and then last but not least, you know, are you a proven winner? Have you been able to impact winning? Do you come from a winning program? Um, I think if you have, we talked about this earlier in the summer, you know, the, the three dynamics I pointed out were shooting quickness and the pick and roll or just quickness in general. And then being a winner, if you have two of the three, you know, you got a chance, you got a chance. Can you get quicker as a guard? I mean, some of that's God given, but how much skill work can you do to actually bump that up? What percentage right. do you think you can improve it? I, you can. I think, you can. Get I think quicker. so. So yes, okay, think, so you can add the quickness, right? That's one thing. You can improve shooting. Think, yeah, ex- experience in the weight room. Like I, I don't think you can get faster. I think you can get quicker. Quicker. It's like yeah. a mental thing. Yeah. Okay. So, so shooting can you can improve as well. Right? Quick, can you, quickness, you can get better. How about a winner? Like how? do you have a prescription that someone follows to become a winner or some of that inside Um, your heart that you just have? Yeah, I think, um, I'll go with, um, (laughs) yes, is it's inside you, but I will also add that, um, you've got to have some good fortune of being surrounded by good people, right? Like your inner circle and, you know, the program or, or, you know, the coach that you're playing for plays a monster role in all of that. Um, You know, it's why the college selection process is so important, right? You get around the right people. You are who you spend time with. I always, always mention that in the recruiting process. So um, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. You know, uh, Joe Mantanga from Blair used to tell me that. Recruit families, you know, not, not players, not athletes. So I think um, the winning component is kind of who is in that person's circle, you know, because nothing, nothing great is accomplished alone, right? Yeah. So if our prescriptions for guards, be as strong as you can, be as fast as you can, be, 
have your analytics down. So make sure you've got those certain percentage marks you hit ideally, right? This is something you can aim towards. Um, if you're around a losing program, if you're at a public school around a losing program with a losing coach that just doesn't get it, you're kind of screwed right there. So maybe you find a successful AU program with the guy you want to be around. Um, have a high IQ. You have to have a high IQ as a guard. So you can always get that watching games, listening to coaches. Um, I'm just trying to think because let me add, let me add to the, um, the 90, 50, 40 ratio, you know, the percentages and the two to one assist to turnover ratio is, you know, can you get paint touches, right? Do you have a little bit of wiggle because there's always going to be a high, uh, demand. There's a, it's a premium. If you can get the ball to the paint and then make plays from there, I think that's a, you know, a monster part of it. Um, and conversely on the defensive end is, can you keep, you know, guys out of the paint, right? And let's go um, back to the book gatekeepers you recommended to me, right? Let's say you've got two guards exactly the same. They're clones, right? But one takes charges, one doesn't. The kid that takes charges is going to be better, right? Both are clones. This one has a 3.5. This one has a 2.8. 3.5 is going to win. This one's a student body president. This one's not. He's going to win. The more interesting you are as well, if, if we're talking two identical players, you're going to be taken. So – Yes, you want to specialize in basketball, do as much as you can, but you also have to have those, those attributes that separate you from the pack. Since there are so many guards out there and they're very similar in a lot of aspects, what else do you have? At the prep schools, you know this, there's certain boxes to check, right? If you're a good basketball player, that checks a box. If you're from a part of the world or country that's not represented there, that checks a box. But if you also have um, speak a second language or play the piano or start at a club at school or volunteer at a soup kitchen. Those additional things make you more interesting as a person and someone that a school and a team is going to win around versus just guys that are strictly focused on basketball. That's great. But when there is such a fine line, like the fine line there, you, you just have to find separators. And those are kind of things that do that. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. And I think going back to who's in your circle, it really helps to have people, um, who can radiate, you know, your story to the right people, right? Like, I think if you're going around kind of like uh, politicking and promoting yourself, that's, that can be challenging. Or like your parents are doing the promotion, you know, I think having the right people in your corner who are respected and experienced to be able to kind of share that those little intangibles, I think is really, really beneficial.